Hello everyone, Cody from EGW here. Today we're gonna to talk about red dots. This is something that we get a tremendous amount of questions about. It is by far the most popular item that we've been selling over the last year or two. And uh, these things are awesome. They work really well. Uh, we have a lot of different applications to use them on. And today we're gonna to kind of go over a general uh, just overview of the items. We're gonna talk about the different manufacturers and some of the different brands that we have them for, the different footprints that we make the mounts for, uh, touch on a little bit of basic installation instructions and a few other things. So the first thing, we have some weapons here on the table. First thing that we wanna do, um, whenever you're working around guns, always make sure that they're unloaded and pointed in a safe direction. So we have all three of these open. Um, we're just gonna check them again as well. Just make sure, you can never be too careful whenever you're working with any sort of firearm. So I'm gonna put all these with the slides back open again, just to make sure that we're all clear. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about today is the materials and the design of these red dot mounts. We get a lot of questions about this and hopefully we can answer some of them in the video today. I'm just gonna get one of them out here to kind of use as an example. So all of these mounts are machined out of one solid piece of aluminum. We use 7075 T6 aircraft grade aluminum. They're all hard coat anodized as well. Um, these are made to install into the dovetail cuts on the slides of pistols and revolvers. The way that we design these mounts is to have them fit intentionally tight into the dovetail cuts. So these should be press fits into your dovetail. Um, there are some manufacturers that do have a little bit of inconsistencies in their dovetail specs. Uh, there are a couple of brands where we find that sometimes you need to do a little bit of fitting to the dovetail surface. And um, we'll touch on some of those in some later videos. We're gonna do some product highlights on certain manufacturers and just go into a little bit more detail on some of the optic mounts that we have for those. But today we're just gonna try to keep this as more of a general video. Um, the hardware for these mounts is included we provide you with the screws to hold the optics to the plate. We also provide you with the set screws as well to tighten down into the dovetail. Um, we tap all of our plates, well, three out of the four plates, we tap to 632 threads. And then for the Vortex Razor, we use an 832. Um, and we do that just because different manufacturers of dots provide different size and spec hardware. And we chose to go with a standard it's a hardware store type thread. Um, if you ever would you know, mess up the head of the screw or something, you could more than likely get a replacement from a hardware store. Um, so we went again with 632 for the Venom footprint, the Delta Point footprint, and the Trigicon, and the Razor is an 832. Um, so just to highlight that again, all of these mounts are one piece. So the dovetail is a part of the bottom of the mount. It's all machined out of one solid piece of, of billet. We use 7075 T6 aluminum. They're hard coat anodized and the screws are included and the, the set screws and everything that you need to mount it to the guns all included. The next thing that we're gonna go into a little bit of detail about is how to tell if your gun is an optics ready pistol or if you can use one of our dovetail mounts. So that's why we have some of these guns here to use as examples. So we have a SIG 320 here. Um, this is an optics ready model. So we'll, we'll just pull this optic off here real quick to give you a little bit better idea. Maybe. All right. So you can see here, this slide has been machined to accept a red dot, in this case, it's the Sig Romeo, uh, directly to the slide. So there's still a rear sight, but there's a pocket that's milled out ahead of the rear sight, and that's where the dot just sits right on. And this one kind of slides in from the side, but um, it goes right in place there. Uh, you don't have to remove the rear sight. You can still co-witness with your iron sights this way. Um, we do not have any plates currently for optics ready pistols. So that's why this is important. If your gun has this cutout, um, we don't have anything to help you at this point. So there are SIGs that have this. Um, there are some Walthers that have it as well. There are some Glocks, the Glock MOS system. Um, we do not have any conversion plates for those. All of our mounts mount into the rear dovetail. So I have a Glock 19 here. 
This is an aftermarket site, but it's a stock do uh, Glock dovetail. And this would be something that we could switch over. Uh, we do have dovetail mounts for the Glock. So you can see here, this is just a, a factory rear sight with a dovetail cut. Um, what you would do is push this rear sight out and put our plate in place of that. And then you could mount your optic. And we have a 1911 here that we did just that. So we removed the sight on this. This is a Dan Wesson Valor. This is a Novak rear sight cut would be what came on this gun standard. Um, we pushed that out and put one of our plates in. And this is just to give you an idea of what it looks like. So um, the benefit of the optics ready is that your sight would mount a little bit lower, um, but there's not a lot of options on the market right now to convert those cuts. So our plates work really well because you can turn a lot of different guns into uh, a, you know, a pistol with an optic on it, which is pretty cool. So mount installation into the slide is something, again, that we get a lot of calls about. And like I mentioned earlier, these mounts are designed to be a tight press fit into the slide. That's really one of the only things that holds them in. Um, so we'll go into a little bit more detail about installation of the mount right now. Um, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do, again, make sure that your gun is clear. Uh, make sure that there's no ammunition in it at all. It's pointed in a safe direction while you're working on it. And you're gonna wanna push out your old sight. Um, the, the best way to do that would be with a sight pusher. And we do not sell any sight pushing tools, but uh, you can get those from Brownells, Midway, any of the other places that have a lot of um, you know, gunsmithing equipment. The other thing, if you're not sure about what you're doing, is you could take your pistol to a gunsmith. They would have the right equipment to do this installation for you. Um, it's very similar to installing a, a rear iron sight or a fiber optic sight. Um, you know, they push out the old one, put in the new one. So they would have all the equipment. Once you get that mount out of, or your, your sight out of the slide, you're ready to install our mount. All of our mounts have a slight lead on the right side of the mount and they're designed to push in from the left side of the pistol to the right side. And that would be if you are looking from behind the gun as if you're shooting it. So you're gonna wanna push it in from the right side toward the left, or I'm sorry, from the left side toward the right side. And that lead just helps you get the mount started in the dovetail cut. And normally you can get them in with your hands about a third of the way, and then you're gonna need to use a sight pusher or um, block of hardwood, a dowel rod, a plastic punch, anything like that that you can tap on to, to drive it the rest of the way in. And um, having a vise to hold the slide really helps as well. It just holds it nice and sturdy. You want to line your vise jaws with some cardboard, um, something that's not gonna mar the side of your slide. But push it in that way. Um, we recommend using a little drip of Loctite on one or both of the sides of the dovetail. As you're installing the mount, that aids kind of as a lubricant and it helps it install a little bit easier and then once it sets up, it helps to hold it in place a little bit better on top of the friction fit. So you're kind of getting a, a, you know, an added, a second added bonus there. Um, once you get the mount slid in place, um, all of our mounts have at least one set screw. Some of them have two, depending on the, the style of the gun. But once you get the mount pushed in, you let the Loctite set up. Um, you want to just snug up that set screw. You don't want to over torque it. If you over torque it, it's going to want to kind of pull the mount up out of the dovetail. Um, that's not good. It's not going to be flush. It may not be level anymore and you might have trouble sighting the gun in. It also may work itself loose actually, which is kind of counterintuitive. People think if you crank on that, it'll hold it in. It actually could make it loosen up easier. Um, so just snug that down. And then when you're installing the screws on top of the mount that hold your optic in place, um, do not want to over torque those. We recommend 15 inch pounds. Double check with the optics manufacturer. Some companies use different materials for the bodies of their optics. Some of them are metal, some of them are plastic. Um, you don't want to over torque any of the mechanisms inside of those. So they should all have that published in their literature. Um, but just tighten those down. Um, you can use a drip of blue Loctite on those as well, just to help them uh, not vibrate loose. So the next thing that we're gonna to touch a little bit on, and this is, we, it's a huge list, so we're gonna go into some of the more common manufacturers and, and weapons that we have mounts for. Um, again, at a later date, we're gonna put out some other videos where we go into these in more detail. So today we'll just touch on some of the more common ones. Um, the Glock that we have here, by far the most popular platform. Um, we have a lot of, uh, four different mounts for these. 
Um, the other popular ones that we're seeing a lot of right now are the Walther PPQ, uh, the Springfield XD, Smith & Wesson M&P, um, the FN, uh, FNX is another really popular one. All of the SIGs, the 320s, the 220s, the 226s, 229s, the, those are all a common dovetail cut, so we have mounts for those. Um, we have mounts for Kimber 1911s, Smith & Wesson 1911s, and also other 1911s. So like this one that we have here is uh, Dan Wesson. Um, you just have to be careful with 1911s because there are a few different standard dovetail cuts that are used. Um, and we'll touch in those. We'll probably do a 1911 video and go into a little more detail. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is a Novak cut. That's one of the more popular that is on the market today. There's also Bomar and LPA um, that you'll see on some of your some of the pistols that are on the market. Uh, we also have mounts for H and K pistols as well. The USP and the VP9 are two of the more popular ones there. Um, and we have a few for revolvers too, Smith and Wesson and um, Ruger revolvers, we have mounts for those. So the last thing that we're gonna talk about is the different footprints that we make mounts for. And we have four different, we'll call them footprints, four different mounts. Um, I have them laid out here. We'll go kind of around in terms of popularity and, and uh, like sales. So the most popular one is the Vortex Viper, Vortex Venom footprint. This mount also accommodates the Burris Fast Fire and uh, ADE, which we have one here on the table uh, as an example. Crimson Trace is another manufacturer that fits this footprint and uh, the Doctor Optic as well. So you have the, the Vortex Viper, Vortex Venom, Burris Fast Fire, ADE, and Crimson Trace. The second footprint would be the Trigicon RMR. This one also fits the SRO, which is their new optic. Um, pretty cool. Has like a circular window, really wide sight picture. Uh, looks to be a pretty good optic. So that they use the same footprint for this one or as, as the RMR. The third one would be Leupold uh, Delta Point and Delta Point Pro. Uh, that mount also fits a couple of other manufacturers' optics. So you have Optima. Their optics fit this footprint. Uh, JP Enterprises has their own dots. Those fit on this one as well. And then the Redfield Accelerator also fits on the Delta Point footprint. And then the last one um, is the Vortex Razor. And this footprint fits on the, uh, fits the Seymour optics as well. Their STS and CTS optics fit onto this one. And I just remembered the Trigicon RMR footprint also fits the Hollow Sun 507. 507C. Uh, they do have another optic, the 510. That one does not fit on this. It's a much bigger optic and it has a Picatinny mount on the bottom. It's more designed for ARs. So if you have a hollow sun, make sure that it's the 507. Um, that one fits onto the Trigicon footprint. So that was a lot of information. Hopefully you guys um, pick up some stuff that you didn't know out of this video. Uh, if you have any questions, you can comment or call us or email us and uh, we can try to clarify a little bit more but um, this was a kind of supposed to be a general video to give you guys some basic information, maybe some stuff that you didn't know um, about red dot mounts and the different things that we have. So thank you guys for watching, really appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned next week for some more videos. Have a good one.